go. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Today is our annual, um, we call it our OMEA preview concert. We have um, going to district, Ohio Music Education Association. Um, us old people call it contest. It's officially called adjudicated event these days. Um, but uh, that is two weeks from last Thursday, which is a little unusual to be Thursdays. Um, we had a, a conflict, and just luckily, for the first time ever, we have a Thursday slot available. So it's Thursday, March 9th at Oak Harbor High School at um, 7.30? 7.30, I'm asking them. Um, at 7.30 p.m., you wanna make sure that you are there. If you're coming to watch, in plenty of time, it is free admission, but the doors close at 7.30 and they don't let anyone in once the performance starts. So uh, make sure that you get up to Oak Harbor in plenty of time to uh, find your way to the auditorium. It's a beautiful auditorium, very similar to ours, sound-wise, um, and I think you'll enjoy it. Get there early and, and uh, hear some other groups. I know that they'd appreciate it. I know the choir sings on Friday. What time's the choir singing? Do you guys know? No? They, they don't know yet. Mr. McBride knows. Um, and so, uh, so if you feel like making two trips, make two trips, get there and support our choir as well, that would be fantastic. So the purpose of today is, one, to get you to hear the concert band, because we haven't really done concert band um, this year since we went to Memphis. Um, and um, we're going to play through the songs that we're going to do at contest. Uh, we are lucky to have a, a guest here, uh, Dr. Mark Karulikar, um, and he is uh, going to be listening to us and then is going to um, come up here after the first two songs and work with the kids a little bit and talk, sort of talk to you about the process also. And then we're gonna play a third song and then we're going to dismiss us to the band room to work some more and then you guys can go home and prepare a lovely dinner for when we get there. Um, no. um, so uh, enjoy. Um, I think you'll, you'll like this program. Uh, I know we're, we're liking it and, and starting to get, um, get it to where we want it to be for contest. So um, like I said, uh, sit back and enjoy. Uh, we'll do the first two songs, then we'll, we'll welcome Dr. Pulakar, and then uh, another song, and it'll be great. You'll have a good time. Thanks for coming.
And there we go. Thank you. Um, we're going to welcome Dr. Pulikar on stage. And while he is coming up here, um, you want to help me? Sorry, there's a plan. Um, well, he's heading up here. Um, a couple of things about why there's a gap here. So, as band directors, we try our best to try and pick stuff out for groups that fit the groups. We didn't make a concert band this year until we got back from Memphis. Um, so the, the, I, I, picked the mu I picked music out for a group that didn't exist. We get the group together, we're trying to hack it out, trying to hack it out, and it's obvious to me it's just not whatever. So we have a new song that's next, after Dr. Pulikar says a couple things. We have a new song that's next that we started playing on Friday. Um, we play it just for the third time ever in warm-ups. We play it twice on Friday, once before we came out here. So the next song will be the fourth time ever we've played it. And so I thought, well, we'll get a little, couple words here for the two songs we've practiced a little more. Uh, and then we'll play the third one for you, and then you'll just have to come up to a carburetor to see the rest of the result. But this is, as I told the students, totally not on them, totally on me. Um, I thought, I was talking to Dr. Pulikar before the show, and he said, well, you know, sometimes, uh, you think you want steak, you should have had salad. Um, and I, I fell in love with the piece, just doesn't quite fit us the way that it should, and that's okay, we're gonna do it on a spring concert, um, but we're not gonna do it for contest. So that's why the, we decided to take a gap here before playing the third one. So fun story, uh, Dr. Pruilkar, who what's your official title? Director of Music Coordinator. Music Coordinator for the Pickerington City Schools? Local schools, just schools, local schools, okay. Should have, probably should have done that beforehand, huh? That's okay. Um, so I've known Dr. Pulikar for a long time. Um, I was trying to think. We had a little bit of undergrad overlap, I think. And then we did grad school together, and then he kept going. Um, hence the doc. Um, and they missed her. So, uh, so anyways, and so I've known, I've known uh, Dr. Pulikar for, for a very long time. Stand up here and embarrass him for half a second. Fine gentleman, outstanding music educator, and the high school band director of Ms. Beeman. And so when Ms. Beeman came up here, I was like, you know what we should do? We should get your boy, Dr. P, up here to do our clinic this year because that would be great. And she was like, ah, I'm so nervous. Anyways, that's the whole story. Great story, Steve. Thanks. Um, so uh, without further ado, and He's going to, uh, Dr. Pulikar is going to work a little bit with us. He wanted you here for part of it so he could hear what was going on. And uh, would you help me please welcome Dr. Mark Pulikar. So, ah, it's working. Um, so first of all, thank you so much for having me out. Students, so you know we're going to go back to the first song. It's going to be the first thing we're going to work on. So if you want to get position, I already gave percussion. 411, do you know what that means? If I say the four, you used to be able to dial information, 411. Hey, it's really great to be here. Can we give these students a huge round of applause? They're amazing. So I have the privilege to do this at a number of different schools each year, and I absolutely love doing it. One of my favorite things to do is to watch what happens before the concert, because I think it says a lot about the organization to see what's happening. And I have some observations that you should all be proud of. First of all, everyone was on time. I noticed that. I was like, everyone was on time for rehearsal. That's amazing. The most important ability you have is your availability. And when you make yourselves available, that's the first chance you have to be great at anything. So that's awesome. It shows dedication. I noticed too, this, this may, may seem like a weird one, but it's a band director thing, music teacher thing. I also looked around and I saw complete instrumentation, meaning all the instruments that's necessary to sound good are present in the ensemble. I can't tell you how many places I go to where that's not the case. And that often takes student sacrificing because they might have been playing another instrument. We band directors come to them and say, you know, we really need a tuba, or we really need a bass clarinet, or whatever the instrument is that might make the ensemble sound that much better and have everything in it. And oftentimes those students make a little sacrifice to do that, or a big sacrifice to make those changes. So I noticed that we're fully instrumentated, and I, trust me, I go a lot of places, I do a lot of judging and clinicking, and you don't see that everywhere, so that's pretty amazing. And the final thing, you could hear a pin drop in rehearsal. 
Mr. Co when Mr. Kaufman was talking, there was rapt attention from all of the students. They were dialed in, they were paying attention, they were willing to accept critique and information, and that was really terrific. So how about another round of applause for these students? They are amazing. So we're gonna work a little bit in a couple places just so you can get a little taste of how the students work to improve. And the way that I like to think of it is uh, these students are a really fine block, the finest you could find anywhere, most expensive Italian marble. You know, they're, they're here and they're ready to be sculpted, okay? And right now I feel like the music is, if we think Statue of David or some famous sculpture, um, you know, like there's almost an arm coming out and you can start to see the face forming, but you can tell that it's still under construction, okay? And what the directors do and the students do in the rehearsal process is they're chiseling away to get as many details as they possibly can until the music looks like what the music is supposed to look like, okay? Or another way to think about it is we're cooking our, our, uh, a really fine uh, meal, you know, and we've got all the ingredients here, now we have to have the right amount of this ingredient, the right amount of that ingredient, we need to turn up the heat when we need to turn up the heat, we need to cool it down when we need to cool it down, and all of a sudden you get the recipe to come out. So students, I enjoyed listening to your performance, um, and I want to work with you just a little bit in a few places, and I might trade exchange places with Mr. Kaufman every now and then, because um, he knows the pieces better, but I might jump up a little bit too um, as we're doing it. So the the first thing I noticed in the march, the castles in Europe that you're applying, and it, it's kind of loosely a march, right? It's not like a Sousa march or anything like that, but it has some march elements to it, is that the harmony was getting lost. There's so much beautiful harmony in this piece, and I thought it was getting lost. So I'm going to do something maybe a little weird. I'm going to find the measure number really quick, and this may seem kind of weird to you, but can you find measure 55? When I was listening to the piece, I was like, oh, measure 55, there's harmony all throughout the piece. But in measure 55, I felt like here's a place where everyone's contributing to harmony kind of in a, in a similar way. Like, I, as long as I'm not making a mistake, everyone's, there's some grace notes, we're not going to play those. But everyone's got eighth notes all the way through. So would you just play for me your first note of measure 55 and just hold it out? Two, ready? I like it. We're going to shape that chord a little bit in a second, okay? But I'm going to tell you that every one of these eighth notes has a chord that's just as interesting as that chord. Every single one of those eighth notes is an incredibly important harmony, okay? Play the first chord for me again. And you probably, if I go like this, do you know what I mean? Sound pyramid, Mr. Kaufman, Miss Beeman, whatever, sound pyramid. More low voices than high voices. Ready? <sighs> Good. Low voices, can you get a little beefier, a little thicker, a little fuller? It's like uh, the crust of the pie. Two, ready? Good, but the rest of you got louder too. Thanks for the enthusiasm. The rest of you stay about the same, but low voices, bring it. Ready? Ah, okay. We start to have a chance of getting that really nice sound if the low voices can be really full. And it's not all the time because there's different kinds of balances, but we're in this kind of balance. We need those low voices to be super strong. Do it one more time and low voices stay strong. Basically, the longer your instrument, the louder you're going to play. The shorter your instrument, the softer you're going to play. Two, ready? Good, I like that. Do it one more time. Two. Ready? Good. Do you guys ever play any chorales in class, like those nice smooth kind of songs? Okay. We're going to play every eighth note through here for measure 55, 56, 57, and 58, like a smooth chorale. So each eighth note is going to be a quarter note, so it's going to be like one and two and next measure next and next measure like that. So each eighth note is just going to be a nice slow note. Smush it into the next one. Two. Ready. Good. 
so the challenge is can you do all those like the sound pyramid so that means low voices you're going to have to stay big and strong the whole way through and upper voices you're going to have to fit your role as you go through okay so i feel like low voices you started out good, but then you kind of backed off. So I'm going to, hopefully Mr. Kaufman and Ms. Beeman don't hate me when I say this, but I'm going to say for now, you can breathe whenever you want to. So if you get to breathe after every note to make it as strong as we want it, then breathe after every note. Maybe, maybe get a couple more than one note, but breathe, breathe as much as you can, but make sure it's super strong. Okay, here we go. Again, same idea. Hear all the harmony. Two, ready? That was better. I think you made it longer, tubas, okay, and low voices. We're, we're going to give the audience a chance to vote at the end. It's just thumbs up sideways or down, okay? Okay? Here's what I want you to do, audience. When you can hear the tuba as strong as you think you want it, keep your thumbs up. And as they, if they, they give them, let's give them some instant feedback, okay? Here we go. No, no pressure. It's only the whole audience listening to you. Okay, here we go. Ready? Two. Ready? That was better, okay? And it probably, especially if you're a lower voice, it's probably making you feel physically a little uncomfortable to maintain the energy for that long. That's good. That means you're getting better. It's just like if you weight lift or do anything, you run for distance or speed, any of those kinds of things. The only time you're ever getting better is when you're uncomfortable, right? Especially if you're talking about muscle things. Like if your muscles aren't pushing, hard to be stronger, then they're not going to get stronger. They're going to stay the same. Do it again. That was much better. Okay. Ready? Yeah, terrific. Okay. Do it one more time that way, and then we're going to put it back into the march style and try and keep that sound permit. Yeah, that's great. Tubas, you're really filling it up now, okay? You can dig on the string bass too. Are you pizzicato in there? Yeah, you probably would be playing it like this, okay? Cool, awesome. Um, yeah, keep it up. Here we go. Ready? Try it again. Be uncomfortable if you're in the lows. Ready? <sighs> idea and if you spend some time even if you can't do it in rehearsal sometimes when you've got parts like this and it's been identified as something that has a lot of harmony to it those kinds of things that's when you know you've got to maybe practice it slow to make sure you get all that part out okay but now we're going to go march tempo and we're going to be and see if you can make it just as harmonic though okay because that's the real interest here a bunch of eighth notes in a row is boring it's the harmony that's exciting here we go one two ready yeah better um can you be shorter with your eighth notes because when we have all these eighth notes in a row they need to be like that here we go ready shorter two ready yeah, cool. Audience, do you hear the difference, okay? They're doing such a great job. And once again, that was an observation. I knew this was going to be fun today because when I watched them rehearsing with Mr. Kaufman and warming up, I knew they knew how to listen. So that's great. Great job, parents, because I know that it's hard when they're teenagers. No offense, teenagers. I have teenagers, too. I have teenagers, too, okay? And they're doing a great job, okay? Awesome. Really good. Can we keep the harmony idea going? Okay, but we're going to go back to measure five. Okay, so I measure five just to make life easy. I'm going to skip the pickup notes. Okay, 
And let's do it up tempo one time, and then we're gonna go corral style. We're just gonna go to the next key change, so to 21. Okay, here we go. Uh, one, two, ready. Cool. We are going to now play this like a corral, okay? I'll explain. We're going to go beep boop beep boop beep boop and if you've got off beats, you're going bo, bo, bo. If you've got down beats, you're going boom, boom. So the off beats and down beats are like boom, bo, boom, bo, boom, bo. They're going to be real slow, okay? Here we go. Five, one, two, corral, and go. Bo. Yeah, careful. I might have done a bad job of explaining, okay? So if you've got the melody, you're going beep, ba, ba, beep, ba, ba, beep, ba, ba. I think I started making it up after the first four notes. But you get the idea, okay? And if you're if you're the other part, you're going one rest, three rest, or you're going one, two, four, like that. Here we go. And percussion view, like one, da, da, dee. Da, da, de. And a bass note would be like a half note. Boom, two, boom. Here we go. One, two, ready. Low, low stress. Let's just do a smaller chunk. Five, six, and seven. That's it. Five, six, and seven. It's okay. A couple people that the, the, my weird way of doing it's confusing you, and it's not your fault. You're just new, new to you. Here we go. Measure five. One, two, ready, go. Ba, ba, beep. Ba, 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 ba. And stop. Do it again. One, two, ready, go. Good, do it one more time. You're starting to get the hang. Try it again. One, two, ready, go. That's the spirit, okay? And I started to hear some of the middle harmony come out as we went through. Go up tempo now, okay? Just that much. One, two, ready. Yeah, cool, good. All of a sudden, harmony a little clearer. One more time. One, two, and ready. Yeah, cool. I like it, okay? So, that idea of making sure in this march that all the harmony comes out is really important. There's lots of interesting stuff happening, but we need that harmony to help us as we're playing through. Great job. Thanks for working with me on some crazy things. Can we go to the next piece now, Beyond Reach? And in this one, the biggest thing I heard, okay, was making sure that the windows of opportunity for other parts to come out, come out, okay? People, I think, overall are doing a pretty good job of playing your part, but then as it starts to repeat into, like, similar things, you know, like you have a, a pattern in percussion that happens over and over again, or a pattern in low brass that happens over and over again. You've got to get out of the way as you're doing those and really drop out, okay? So we're going to go at the top, okay? Um, percussion, tell me, is this too fast? I'm going to go one, two, three, four. Is that okay? Okay, cool. If, it, if I go weird tempo, just somewhere raise your hand and be like, it's too fast, it's too slow, okay? Here we go. Ready? Beyond reach beginning. One, two, ready. Cool, okay. Um, 
Audience, we're going to do that again, and I want to know if you can hear the French horns and clarinets. All right, here we go. 17. We're right on 17. Here we go. Measure 17 if you play, play. Right on it. One, two, ready. Oh, that was better. Okay. Now, what was interesting is, and this, this shows that Mr. Kaufman and Ms. Beeman are doing a great job with you. I basically gave you the reminder without giving you the reminder, right? So they can come out, okay? Can you exaggerate that even more so that they can be body body So their part can just sing out over the top. Here we go. 17, that's terrific, everyone. 17, one, two, ready. Hey, percussion, um, we'll do one or two more things on this and then we'll get your last piece in and then we can ship gears into the, the other venue for this. But at measure 17 and similar percussion, can I hear only your accents? I mean, you're gonna play the whole part, but I want the audience to only really hear the accent. And I think that you are already playing the accents at a good volume. Disappear the other part so that So it almost doesn't exist unless it's an accent. Cool, that's nice, here we go. Great job, low brass, bringing your part down. 17, one, two, ready. So when the other repeated parts are kind of swamping the boat, all of a sudden these other moments can come out really nice, okay? Those ostinato parts, it's like a boat sitting on the ocean floating along. And if your part's repeated, you have to be underneath supporting the boat. You don't want to swamp the boat as you go through. Cool, that is awesome. I know we have some more pieces to get to for the concert. So we're gonna move on to the next phase, but audience, once again, parents and everyone supporting these students, they are such great listeners and so, great at just kind of really quickly taking critique. It's really fun to work with them. Let's give them a huge round of applause. Thank you, students. Amazing. Amazing.
There we go. Thank you again for coming out. We are going to go and do a little bit of work in the room with uh, Dr. Pulakar, and um, you all can go and have uh, an hour worth of free babysitting time. Um, I told the students we'd be done, we'd be all wrapped up by five. Originally on the schedule it said six, but we decided to cut it back to five. Um, so, could be a little before then, but, but chances are uh, five o'clock is a good time if you need to come circle back around and get them. So, take an hour and uh, go get some ice cream, sit in quiet, with all those things we like to do when our children are present. So, uh, thanks again for coming out, and uh, we will see you hopefully uh, Thursday, March 9th at 7.30 in Oak Harbor. Thanks everyone. Have a good night.